We've got with us uh, Craig Wolf and then also Patrick Kinchler. Patrick uh, is the founder and operator of uh, Forever Yesterday Exchange. And Patrick, let's uh, talk a little bit about this uh, unique business. And first of all, give us the 30,000 foot view as we um, highlight your very cool company. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, so we're celebrating five years uh, next month, actually, so we're pretty excited about that. But uh, we offer estate liquidation and clean-out services, uh, and so we'll go into a home and uh, make an offer on everything in the home and uh, essentially bring it back to one of our two locations currently and uh, price it accordingly and resell it in our second-hand shops. And we're at the 90th and Maple location. Where's the other one? 84th and L Street. So, okay, so you go into these houses when someone's going to have an estate sale, and basically, if I understand correctly, what doesn't sell, uh, then you make a bid to take um, off of their hands. Yeah, sure. So we do uh, work with a lot of estate sale companies, um, but we work with a lot of probate, real estate agents, and uh, come in and take everything from uh, hoarding and abandonment situations to big sprawling estates out in Elkhorn. Uh, so the estate sale business is a part of it, uh, but it's certainly not all of it. And one of the companies you work with, and Jeff wanted me to bring this up, was a Twist of Fate Estate Sales. Yes. And uh, to Shell and Joel, I'm sure you're listening, they wanted to be here this morning, Jeff, and bring you a present, but uh, they were short a person. Like an ad sponsorship check? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, back to you, Patrick. Uh, that's an inside joke that Trent and I have. For some reason, he loves pimping that company, even though they're not an official Gromha advertiser. They're good folks. <laughs> yeah, they, they do good work. So t- talk to me a little bit about this hoarding thing. Um, yeah. Because, you know, there has been, um, oh, I think some one of the networks has a hoarding reality TV show and all that sort of thing. Um, how does that happen? Like some family member is finally fed up or, or uh, there's an intervention or what? It show, usually there's a death uh, somewhere in the family, and uh, a family is uh, needing to take care of an estate, and uh, it's just like the TV show. Uh, we handle the handle the estate with sensitivity and uh, dispose of, remove, donate, uh, and resell what we can. Patrick, isn't there's different types of hoarders? There's there's hoarders that actually have like nice stuff, and then there's hoarders that just collect every paper they've ever seen and and just trash. Isn't isn't, isn't there a spectrum of of hoarders? It's quite a spectrum. So those two things, plus we uh, find uh, hoarded uh, dead animals and uh, uh, all kinds of different things. So it is a very broad spectrum of hoarding. And he's not talking about uh, taxidermy, ladies and gentlemen. And to be sure, those those don't make it to the store. Um, so, so Patrick, um, let's say um, you, you guys are, are, are brought in to clean out a house. Um, there's probably some things that you don't want uh, sure. that they don't have a resale value. What do you do with that? Just have a big dumpster or something or what? Yeah, so we do have a dumpster, uh, but we dispose of as little as possible. Uh, okay. So we, we donate a tremendous amount of stuff. Uh, we're given to churches. We're given to nonprofits. Um, so anything that we don't have a good resale value on or something that we choose or elect not to sell, uh, the first step is to try and donate it further because someone's got a use for it. I think one of the, the, the cool things that uh, Patrick and his crew here at Forever Yesterday does is uh, they support the foster care community pretty strongly. Can you talk about that a little bit, uh, Patrick? Yeah, so we uh, we serve multiple uh, nonprofits that are specifically in the uh, foster care community. Uh, anytime that uh, there's potential for a child to be re- removed from a house because they're lacking a bed or a washing machine or whatever the case is, um, they'll contact us. And if we can fulfill the need, then we definitely do. Uh, I often get the opportunity to deliver uh, the stuff myself, and it's just amazing to see the smile on these kids' face. And to me, it's an ugly couch, but to them, it's amazing. So yeah, it keeps it keeps a, a family together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a, it's it's really uh, an awesome opportunity, not only uh, to uh, allow people to um, you know save some money on the second hand side uh, with, with the stores, you know. Clothing is one of the biggest secondhand store items uh, that uh, we sell and uh, across the nation. One out of every three apparel items last year bought was from secondhand, and so it's that it's a big industry. And it's not just for the for the needy too. It's it's for people. It's it's kind of a, a, a in style thing for for uh, wealthy kids and adults to go thrifting. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so they're they're coming in and shopping, and we're we're looking for the resellers. We're looking for the people that think it's trendy, uh, but we also have our stuff priced uh, so that the mother of five can put clothing and shoes on all of their kids and still be okay. 
So this particular store at uh, 90th and Maple, there's a retail strip on the northwest corner and the far west end of it. Um, it's a small storefront because a ri- you go in and you immediately go down the stairs. Now, when I was a kid, Patrick, this was a uh, roller skating yeah. rink business. We used to go to birthday parties here. It's down in the basement called Cheap Skate. And when I went down to the, the store this morning, it was cool because you can still kind of see yeah. where the roller skating rink is. And you guys have done a great job in turning it into a store. I'm, I'm also fond of your, your main store. Uh, was it about 85th and L Street? That was the Des- the Costa Sporting Goods. Where oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Anybody yeah. in the Westside School District, especially, you know, we went there for our our sports stuff and and gym stuff. Did you play sports, Trenton? Uh, you could call it that. Uh, I wrestled I wrestled till eighth grade and football till ninth, but I I was more in student government. I, I was good at watching sports. So we're out here live remote today. Forever yesterday exchange. Uh, is the name of the store. And um, now when I when I was down into the store here at 90th and Maple earlier this morning, Patrick, and we're talking with Patrick Kinchler, um, who founded and operated it, um, it, it's not like some of the other thrift stores I've been in. Like a lot of the thrift stores I've been in have been maybe like 95% clothing. Sure. There is some clothing, but there are also a lot of items and, and a lot of things that could be uh, antiques or collector items. Yeah, sure. So it's just the way, uh, again, that we acquire goods. Uh, we are a for-profit business, uh, but we are definitely a second-hand store. Um, but we're not just waiting for um, people to bring us the stuff that they no longer want. Uh, we're actively pursuing and, uh, and going out and acquiring the goods from, uh, again, anything from clothing and shoes to high-end guitars. Anybody that likes high-quality antiques, if you go to estate sales, for whatever reason, the hutches, things that are 100-and-something years old uh, that are very hard to put together and, and very you'd think valuable people don't buy antiques anymore why is that patrick yeah i think uh, there's still a market for some antiques um uh, but people uh just don't collect the same way they used to so they just don't need display space like they used to uh, one of our lowest selling items is china uh and so with that is the china hutch uh so oftentimes we'll just remove the top and sell the bottom as a buffet that is yeah. so funny because when I got married, uh, it was still uh, that point in history where you you had to go get the entire China set of 12 and, and what we didn't receive for wedding gifts, we had to go out and buy ourselves. And I think we've used it in 25 years about 12 times. Now, did, do you have gold on your uh, China? Heck, yeah. There's like some sort of gold uh, circle on it or something. Yeah, or see, maybe see, silver. I don't know. What year did you get married? 1998. See, that's the problem. I mean, it's good. And I'm happy you, have stuff, you know, made it stick and everything. Yeah, thanks. But, thanks, but thanks for the gift. I got married in 2006, and uh, we're at the platinum stage. <laughs> so stage. You, you can tell by like when, when people got what year people got married by like what their their china pattern looks like. So, like, if you got married long enough ago, you're at the bronze stage or yeah. something like that? All right, we're at Forever Yesterday Exchange. We've got Craig Wolf and, and Patrick Kinchler with us. Patrick, I'm kind of curious. How did you get started in this industry? Uh, so I worked full-time uh, in the corporate world before this, and uh, my beautiful wife, Anna, she stayed at home with our kids and kind of was flipping stuff on the side, uh, and we started to make some money at it, and I was done in the corporate world. Uh, so we put our heads together and came up with a business plan, and uh, I resigned, and here we are five years later. Interesting. So um, you literally started this business out of the home with your, with your wife doing it on the side, and next thing you know, um, it's a pretty nice-sized business. Yeah, thank you, yeah. So how did, uh, Craig, how did Patrick and you uh, become connected and work together? Uh, we had a, a friend of ours that uh, brought us together, and, uh, you know, I was not familiar with the secondhand world uh, outside of, you know, like a Goodwill, like, right? We walk into Goodwill, we um, are all familiar with that. But once I started studying uh, the market, uh, not only is it uh, an opportunity uh for just the common good for people to ha- to, to to buy items at a, a at a very reasonable price but the market overall is 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 growing and uh i think it was uh if i read right 2022 uh it was the second hand market was a 28 mil- billion dollar market projected within the next 5 years to go to 70 billion and so uh, especially for the younger folks out there they uh really uh, are looking for second hand goods and um, uh, besides just being able to give to uh, churches and the foster care and the other nonprofits that we can help with, uh, just finding 
really quality items at a at a very affordable price, especially in economic downturn. I, I, I was all in on it, and so here I am today. You know, it is interesting because um, a lot of retail space, you know, Trent and I have talked about how retail has changed so much. I mean, it wasn't that many years ago where you had a lot of big box category killer retailers. Um, like, we still have Barnes & Noble and Best Buy, but there were a lot of other big category killer. Sometimes we would call them junior anchors or junior boxes, if you will. A lot of those have gone away. They've been victims of Amazon.com and other changing ways that people buy products. Well, in a lot of cases, secondhand stores have, have taken some of that space. And, and like you said, it's a $28 billion market. They tend to do pretty well. The other, th- the other thing that's, that Amazon and all these online stores have created is um, the return market. And, and people go out and buy pallets of, go to the Amazon warehouse, wherever it is, and they basically, I don't know if they bid on them or they just pay a flat rate. And then it's kind of like a surprise box. You don't know what you're going to get. But electronics and stuff like that, and people make a lot of money doing that. Have you ever thought about doing that? Uh, we have considered it, but um, we have no shortage of stuff. Uh, so <laughs> another outlet of stuff is, uh, is not what we're looking for. So, All right. Well, we are live on location at uh, Forever Yesterday Exchange. Uh, the exact address is 9006 Maple Street, but in English, that is the northwest corner of 90th and Maple. Big day today here. Uh, Kona Ice is going to come out later. There's going to be food. There's going to be music. Uh, AEF Academy uh, basketball program has got a booth set up where you can test your basketball shooting skills. And we got free Krispy Kreme donuts. Free Krispy Kreme donuts. Fresh. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.